Hey there, everyone. Pastor Tim here from the Church at West Shore. Welcome to our daily devotion and prayer time. This is the post Labor Day edition Tuesday, and we are in Numbers chapter 14, picking up today in verse 13. If you recall, up to this point, the people have, of Israel have done a lot of complaining to the Lord, even up to the point of complaining that, uh, according to the 10 of the 12 spies sent into the promised land, that they should just not go in there. They should go back to Egypt and they are rebelling against God. Here is um, what happens in the aftermath of that. Verse 13, God says to us, but Moses objected. What will the Egyptians think when they hear about it? He asked the Lord. They know full well the power you displayed in rescuing your people from Egypt. Now, if you destroy them, the Egyptians will send a report to the inhabitants of this land who have already heard that you live among your people. They know, Lord, that you have appeared to your people face to face and that your pillar of cloud hovers over them. They know that you go before them in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Now, if you slaughter all these people with a single blow, the nations that have heard of your fame will say, the Lord was not able to bring them into the land he swore to give them, so he killed them in the wilderness. Please, Lord, prove that your power is as great as you have claimed. For you said, the Lord is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion. But he doesn't, does not excuse the guilty. He lays the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. In keeping with your magnificent, unfailing love, Please pardon the sins of the people, just as you have forgiven them ever since they left Egypt. Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested. But as surely as I live, and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, not one of these people will ever enter that land. They have all seen my glorious presence and the miraculous signs I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness. But again and again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. They will never see the land I swore to give their ancestors. None of those who have treated me with contempt will ever see it. But my servant Caleb has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. Now turn around and don't go onward to the land where the Amalekites and the Canaanites live. Tomorrow you must set out for the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. So the people rebelled, God voiced his displeasure, and Moses intervened on behalf of the people. There's a couple things I would like to point out. Number one is the, the practice of interceding for others. The nation of Israel rebelled against God, and Moses loving them so much went to God on their behalf. Now Moses had this ability because Moses was the man of God. Moses had gone to God on many occasions. He had this, this special relationship. Folks, we have that same relationship. It's called the Holy Spirit. And we have the ability to go to God to intercede for those that we love those who are in need of healing, those who are in need of some other type of physical um, need or a, an emotional need. But most of all, we have the ability to go to God to intercede for those who are spiritually bankrupt, for those who spiritually need to know Jesus we have the ability to intercede for them. So let us never stop doing that. Let us intercede for others each and every day. Something else is the idea that God answers Moses' prayer. God answers Moses' request. And he says, okay, um, I, I acknowledge your interceding for the nation of Israel, and so I will not wipe them out. However, and here's something that we all need to learn, 
there were still consequences to their actions. They rebelled against God. Moses interceded for them. God forgave them. But just because their sins were forgiven does not mean that they did not suffer the consequences of those sins. The same is true for us. Our sins are forgiven. We have been bought by the blood of Jesus. We are secure eternally. But we, when we sin, still have to face the consequences, the physical, earthly consequences of those sins. Because why? Because that's simply just the way life is. So may we keep that in mind. May we continue to intercede for people, to intercede for one another as we live this life and walk it together. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you for another day of life and for the gift of eternal life we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your unfailing love that you are ready to forgive daily. Help us to intercede for one another, to acknowledge when someone is not in step with you and to intercede for them that they may return to you come back to you, seek forgiveness. Help us to live our lives in such a way every day we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, have a terrific Tuesday. Until next time, and as always, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care. May God bless you.